Thank you, Joyce. And thank you to everyone attending today's virtual Virginia Space Coast Scholars Closing Ceremony. Happy Friday and good morning. I am Chris Carter, Deputy Director of the Virginia Space Grant Consortium. Our director, Mary Sandy, regrets that she cannot be part of today's ceremony, but she sends her congratulations to the scholars for an excellent week. Today, we honor our Virginia Space Coast Scholars as they complete their summer academy. The Virginia Space Coast Scholars Program is the result of a vision that was shared by the Virginia Space Grant Consortium and NASA Wallops Flight Facility. Since its inception in 2013, more than 2,600 students from all across the state have participated in this program. With the continuation of the COVID-19 pandemic, we again had to offer this academy as a virtual experience. And we were very pleased that we were able to give you this virtual experience and tried our best to mimic the real experience. The Virginia Space Grant staff and leaders from NASA Wallops have worked very hard to make this as possible as close to the on-site experience as possible. I'm amazed at how comfortable the students are with the virtual learning and working environment. And we are extremely grateful to Old Dominion University's Office of Distance Learning for their support in creating the Academy's online environment. Today culminates a wonderful journey for our Space Coast Scholars. The students first spent November through April in an online course in which they completed interactive modules that taught key science, technology, engineering, and math, or STEM concepts. We are focused on missions that are launched or managed by NASA Wallops. And throughout their coursework, they were led by master educators, interacted with their peers, and studied material created by NASA experts. A total of 229 students completed the online course. Students who did well in that course were selected for one of three summer academies. There are 40 scholars participating in this academy, which focuses on the exciting work at NASA Wall. You will hear more about the things the students have created and their experience this week later in the program. And yesterday, I hope everyone was able to see the amazing student presentations, and they were done with such poise and, and uh, well-researched topics. They were prevent, presented with incredible professionalism, and uh, I say kudos to the scholars for their excellent work. And thanks to NASA Waltz for hosting this program and for the contributions of the many people working with the program. I especially want to thank the leadership at Goddard Space Flight Center and Waltz Flight Facility, especially Director David Pierce for their support. Very special thanks for our Waltz colleagues, Dr. Joyce Winterton and Linda Sherman, who are our partners in making this program happen, along with the support of Victoria Dana and Patricia Benner. I also want to give a special thanks to the NASA Wallet subject matter experts who spent so much time and mentored the students this week. Charles Younger, Andrew Hamilton, Matthew Coldsnow, Kyle McAllen, Kathy Hesch, and Alfred Forden. Thanks also to NASA Wallet's presenters, Michael Bonsteel and Jeremy Eggers. And thanks to Ed Murphy from the University of Virginia and Zachary Campbell from the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport for their presentations. Virginia Space Grant is committed to engaging students from throughout the Commonwealth, including those students in areas that generally do not have access to these kinds of programs. That is one reason why Space Coast Scholars and all of our programs are free to all students. This program would not be possible without the master teachers and student interns who work so closely with the students. So thank you to all of you. Thanks to our amazing staff, uh, Rudo Kashiri, our VSGC Education Programs Manager, provides leadership and oversight of this program. And I applaud Joyce Kubrick and thanks her for her tireless work and coordination of the program. Jan Dotsauer has provided program support to keep things running smoothly. And thank you also to our media specialist, Brian Carter, who has been capturing the students' experiences this week in video. And um, thanks to all you parents and students who helped to capture the experience as well on video and submitted uh, videos and pictures. The culminating video of this week's experience will be shown later in this program. Many Virginia Space Grant Consortium opportunities are open to scholars as in their next steps. In your junior or senior year, you can take the Virginia Aerospace Science and Technology Scholars Program, or VAS, and we also offer the Virginia Earth System Science Scholars, or VES. Both of these programs are done in partnership with NASA Langley Research Center, and they include a course and a summer academy, much like this program. Most of those uh, uh, courses provide the opportunity to earn five dual enrolled college credits. And for aspiring commercial or military pilots, we offer the Pathways Flight Academies, a 12 day residential summer academy that provides ground school plus 10 hours of flight training with the potential to do a solo flight. 
Like all of our programs, these are free to selected students and you can apply this fall. As you move into college, we also offer scholarships, fellowships, internships, and many other excellent opportunities. Um, we hope to bridge you uh, to a STEM career, whether it be with NASA or a NASA contractor or any folks working in STEM. And after seeing the work of these students, parents, you can be very proud. I, I applaud you and your efforts in supporting your students in doing this virtual program. So I will now introduce uh, Joyce Kubrick uh, to come back and um, she will take you through the rest of the program. Thanks. Okay. Well, hello everyone. Today culminates a wonderful journey for our Space Coast scholars. The students in this academy first spent a few months in a distance learning program in which they completed interactive modules that taught key STEM concepts. The focus was on missions launched or managed by WALPS flight facility. Throughout their coursework, they were led by a master teacher educator, interacted with their peers, and studied materials created by NASA experts. The best of the best students were invited to one of the three one-week virtual summer academy experiences. NASA Walt's flight facility mentors and staff volunteered their time to make this a special event for all scholars. The master teachers and undergraduate interns have also worked closely with your scholars to help them develop their mission presentations. The culmination of this work was presented yesterday during our panel presentation. Hopefully, you were able to see the fantastic work they have worked on all week. So Chris will now introduce our speakers. Chris, Before I introduce today's uh, guest speaker and keynote speaker, I'd like to ask Dr. Joyce Winterton, Senior Advisor for Education and Leadership Development at NASA Wallets and our partner in the, this program to say a few words. Thank you, Chris. I did want to add my congratulations to the scholars for their great success this week and during the year with their online program. And at, Chris, you did a great job of describing the amazing team that has put together the Virginia Space Coast Scholars, including our three academies. So thank you for our team, the Space Grant, our master teachers, ODU, um, and our interns, it's really been an exciting program, even in a challenging virtual year. Each year we brief the Virginia Assembly because they help fund Virginia Space Coast Scholars, and they are so impressed with what is accomplished, the number of students that participate from across Virginia, and certainly it adds to the importance of a STEM education and career here in Virginia or wherever your career takes you. So thank you. I enjoyed your presentation yesterday. Thanks to the parents and everyone who supports the interns and our scholars as they have completed this important uh, part of their education. And I'm looking forward to seeing the closing video and the remarks. So again, thank you. Great job, everyone. And I'd now like to introduce our uh, speaker, uh, Brenda Dingwall, is the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center Waltz Flight Facility Branch Head for Guidance, Navigation, and Control and Mission Systems Engineering Branch. Brenda, the floor is all yours. Good morning. Um, First, I want to congratulate all of you. You've made a tremendous investment of time and energy, both in the online classes that you did most of the academic year and in spending an intensive week with us. So congratulations for your completion and thank you for investing the time to learn about what you do. I hope you had some fun. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is passion. I'm sure you noticed when you were working with my colleagues that we're very passionate about what we do here at NASA Wallops. We love our work, we love our colleagues, we work hard, but we have a lot of fun along the way. And I hope that that excitement about STEM subjects and space science was conveyed to you. 
and I hope you caught the fever. And if you do, I would encourage you, apply for internships, apply for fellowships. This is intended to be the beginning of your relationship with us, not the end. So if you loved what you do, please make sure that as you continue through your career that you apply for opportunities. What I'll also say is if you apply for an opportunity and you didn't get it, don't get discouraged. Apply again. Keep applying, keep trying, keep going. Um, one of the things I often tell people who are looking for jobs at NASA is most of the people I know that work with me applied for probably 50 to 100 different jobs before they got in. So if you love what we do, don't give up and keep trying. But I also want to take a moment to talk to those of you students who said, yeah, this is cool, but this is not what I want to do. You know what? That's okay too. We need really smart people everywhere. And that's what these camps and internships and fellowships are all about. They, they, they're like trying on clothes in a store. You get to try on careers and see where your passion is. So for those of you, if you didn't find your passion this week, that's not a waste of time. That's one thing to check off the list. Keep trying, keep working. The, the last thing I will leave you with is you've met a lot of friends this week, I'm sure. And you've met a lot of us professionals. Keep in touch. Even if you don't want to do space science. Most of us have you know, been in our careers a long time. We have large networks. Um, many of us have had different careers. My, for myself, I have degrees in engineering, counseling, and public policy, which just lets you know I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. But if you have questions, if you really wish you had asked one of us a question, we are here to serve you, the American public, and to help you grow. Contact us, ask us questions, and enjoy. And lastly, I want to say congratulations, and you folks really are, you give me hope for the future. I was lurking in some of your presentations yesterday, and they were fantastic. You are talented, you are bright, keep going, Find your passion and go for it. And congratulations again. Thank you, Brenda, for that great talk to the students. Um, okay, before we get before we get started with the student presentations, I would also like to thank the master teachers and interns that have contributed greatly to our successful week. Um, if y'all could just introduce yourself, we'll start with ELD. Good morning. I'm Belinda Henriques. I teach earth science at Meadowbrook High School in Chesterfield County. Hi, I'm Claire Kent. I was the intern for ELV this week, um, and I'm a second year at UVA for aerospace engineering. Good morning. My name is Nick Braun. I'm with Scientific Balloons, and I teach high school at Clover Hill in Richmond, Virginia, and teach earth science and astronomy there. Thank you for a great week. Hello, my name is Sai Pupala. I was the intern for Scientific Balloons this week. I'm going to be a sophomore at Virginia Tech and I study computer science. Good morning. My name is Ben Bakuvarakis. I was the master teacher for Sounding Rockets this week. Uh, I am from Newport News and I teach math at Warwick High School. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Drinkle. I was the intern for Sounding Rockets. Um, I am currently a second year at Will and the Marin. Uh, and thank you for a great week. Hello everyone, I'm Shelly Huber. I was the master teacher for the awesome Airborne group. Um, I teach at uh, Clever Hill High School as well in Midlothian, Chesterfield County. I teach AP Environmental Science, Astronomy, and Earth Science. And thank you for an awesome week and awesome students. Hi, I'm Danielle Miller, and I'm the intern for the Airborne Science Group this week. I am a rising sophomore at Virginia Tech, and yep, I'm a rising sophomore at Virginia Tech. 
this is a great week and thank you for sharing your your kids with us <laughs> Sherry, you're on mute. I think after a week, I remember that. Um, <laughs> I'm Shari Davies. I was the master teacher for UAS this week. A uh, great group of kids. I appreciate them and enjoyed working with them. I teach in uh, Newport News, um, Earth Science, Oceanography, AP Environmental Science. Hi, uh, I'm Brian Young. I was the intern for Unmanned Aircraft Systems, and I am a sophomore at Embry-Riddle doing aerospace engineering. Okay, thank you all very much. It would have been difficult, very difficult not to have such a great week without them. And I just wanted to say one more thing too, that these interns have also completed one or more of our space grant programs, and hopefully uh, maybe they'll apply for scholarships or something if they decide to do research with NASA directorates. Directorate, sorry. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and, um, oh yeah, forgot, sorry. Um, I forgot to thank one of the most important people. This entire week would not have been successful without the help of Linda Sherman and her team. Thank you, Linda, for all your help in planning and securing such wonderful mentors for our students. I am sure the students and parents appreciate your dedication to the scholars experience. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You made it such a great week. All right, so now we're gonna have a brief presentation that will highlight the students' uh, panel presentation from yesterday. So we'll go ahead and start with ELV. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ian Krejci. I'm the project manager and environmental scientist for the Gulf Ectotherm Satellite Tracking, or GUEST mission. I'm from the Environmental Office, and I'm from Stafford, Virginia. Today, I'll be giving you all a quick overview of what we've been working on this week in the ELV, or Expendable Launch Vehicle Group. Next slide, please. Basically, the GUEST mission will determine whether environmental changes, particularly fossil fuel contamination in bodies of water, affect the long-term movement patterns of ectothermic marine life in the Gulf of Mexico. We specifically intend on tagging sharks and red snappers using satellite tags. Our launch platform is an Antares rocket, which will be used to deploy seven satellites to work in accordance with the satellite tags. Next slide, please. This was our mission patch, which was designed by our public relations specialist, Tanisha and Elise. At the very top, we have the mission name. We also have seven stars to represent the seven satellites that will be deployed. Then, to the left and right of the rocket, you can see a tagged red snapper and shark, which are the ectotherms being tagged in our mission. Lastly, you can see the Antares rocket launching from Virginia, which will be our, which will be the, as we'll be launching from Wallops Flight Facility. Next slide, please. So here's a brief timeline of our mission. After designing the mission, a mission proposal will be made to Wallops Flight Facility. Once that has been approved, the three-year design period for the satellites will begin. This process consists of system requirements, preliminary design review, and critical design review. The actual building of the satellites will take place during 2026. Building the hardware and developing and implementing the software will be the focus at that time. Satellite testing will occur during the next six months. Then, around June of 2026, the launch will take place. Once the Antares rocket reaches low Earth orbit, it'll deploy seven satellites to propel themselves into polar orbit. Subsequently, the ectothermic marine life will be tagged on Earth. At the end of the year, 2026, the satellites will establish ground communication and get into position. In 2027, the satellites will begin their data collection and continue servicing for approximately seven to 10 years. The mission will conclude after the satellite's lifetime has come to an end. Next slide, please. So there are many benefits that come with this mission and the data that's to be collected. With the completion of this mission, we would have increased knowledge regarding the effects that the many oil spills in the Gulf of Mexico have had on marine life. Publication of our data will help people understand just how these spills affect marine life. Drawing attention to these oil spills and fossil fuel contamination may even push for the use of more sustainable and renewable resources in the future. Next slide, please. Last but not least, we would like to thank Virginia Space Coast Scholars and all Wallops Flight Facility personnel who made this program possible. 
We all learned so much from this incredible program that will carry on with us for a very long time. We would like to thank Ms. Kuberic, Ms. Kashiri, Ms. Dotsauer, our mentor, Mr. Forden, Ms. Sherman, our master teacher, Ms. Henriquez, and our intern, Claire Kent. Next slide, please. And thank you so much to our amazing ELV group for a fantastic week and all of your hard work and dedication. Thank you to our research scientists, Matthew Vic Roberts and Saeed Masood, applied scientists, AJ, AJ Giza, instrument specialists, Aiden Levy and Noah Howell, environmental scientist, Tucker, Tucker Trevette, and public relations specialist, Tanisha Desai and Elise Beasley. Once again, thank you so much for such an amazing program and thank you all for listening. Hello, my name is John Stotts, and I was the project manager for my team's mission, the Exoplanet GJ740B Observation Mission, or EGO. The goal of our mission was to assess the habitability of the exoplanet GJ740B by measuring its atmospheric composition and the effects of its host star. During the mission, we also hoped to confirm the existence of another nearby exoplanet, GJ740C, and to demonstrate new technologies. As the scientific balloon team, the platform we chose was the long duration balloon, as it fit our time and altitude constraints perfectly. For the mission, we partnered with Louisiana State University, the University of Chicago, and the University of Hawaii, all of which are known for their excellent scientific balloon programs and have worked with NASA in the past. We also partnered with the Swedish Space, the Swedish Space Corporation and S-Range Space Center to facilitate our launch from, uh, from the S-Range flight facility in Sweden, as well as the Canadian Space Agency to facilitate our landing and collection from the Timmins Stratospheric Balloon Base. In order to engage the public with our mission, we plan to host a week of events with activities, guest speakers, and contests. The payload our long-duration balloon was, will bring to space consists of a spectrometer to analyze and identify the gas molecules in the atmosphere of GJ740b, and a near-infrared telescope to calculate the dimensions of the planet and gather data. From the mission, we can learn about the possibility of life beyond Earth, data of which would be beneficial to astrobiologists and planetary scientists. Additionally, we intend to test new technologies on the mission, allowing for spinoffs to be made available to other departments in NASA and possibly even the general public. Thank you for listening. Our research scientists were James Heyer and Sam Myers. Our environmental scientist was Amy Riddle. Our applied scientist was Abby Chang. Our public relations specialist were Leilani Cohen, myself, and our instrument specialist was Hari Balaji. We'd also like to recognize our master teacher, Mr. Braun, our team's intern, Sai Pupala, and our subject matter experts, Mr. Hamilton, as well as Ms. Benner and Ms. Kubrick. This concludes our presentation. Thank you again. Okay, thank you, scientific balloons. Um, let's move on to our next group, which is sounding rockets. My name is Sophia Crowder from South Hill, Virginia, and I had the honor to serve as project manager for the Sounding Rockets team. Today, I will give you a brief overview of what we have been working on this past week, the impact mission. In 2004, scientists predicted that asteroid 99942, better known as Apophis, would collide with Earth in 2029. If Apophis were to collide with Earth, simply put, it would create complete and utter chaos. Fortunately, scientists reassessed their findings and concluded that this asteroid would not collide with Earth and instead would pass less than 20,000 miles above the surface of our planet in April 2029. The impact mission aims to address this rare phenomenon by launching a Black Brant 9 sounding rocket out of Equatorial Launch Australia, equipped with the proper instrumentation such as the thermal emission spectrometer, X-ray imaging spectrometer, MapCam, and PolyCam to gather data about the size, composition, structure, and temperature of the Apophis asteroid. With the research conducted on the impact mission, 
We believe the data can serve as a gateway for future innovative research in the field of planetary defense, as well as to help us gain a better understanding of our solar system as a whole. It is our hope that with this initial research into asteroid Apophis, we will be able to collect scientific data that will help us to better understand the formation of our planet through this mission. I am so incredibly honored to have worked alongside this amazing team of brilliant, hardworking and promising future innovators. Starting off with Alice Fang, our environmental scientist, Radimir Couture, our research scientist, Leah Devendorf, our other research scientist, Amika Kapoor, our applied scientist, Will Marshall, our instrument specialist, and Papachio Prodi, one of our public relations specialists. It takes teamwork to make the dream work and these guys truly delivered. In pursuing this research, we had invaluable guidance and help from the following that we would like to acknowledge. Thank you to the Virginia Space Crank Consortium for giving us this incredible opportunity, to Ms. Kathy Hesch, our sounding rocket subject matter expert, Ms. Joyce Kubrick, Ms. Rudo Kashiri, Ms. Jan Dotsauer, uh, the Wallops Flight Facility staff, Ms. Linda Sherman, to all of our presenters and speakers, and of course, to our two incredible mentors who have guided us every step of the way. Thank you to our master teacher, Mr. Ben Bakubarakis, and to our student intern, Aaron Driscoll. Thank you so much. Oh, great job sounding rockets. So let's move on to our next group, which will be airborne science. Good morning, I'm Shreya Dale, the project manager for the Airborne Science team. I'm from Ashburn, Virginia, and today we will be talking about the deity or the determining the effects of greenhouse gases in tornadoes yearly mission. Here's a quick overview of what the Airborne Science team did for the past week. Next slide, please. The DAD mission will further develop our understanding of tornadoes. Our mission is to analyze data on environment conditions associated with tornadoes and greenhouse gases to determine the effects those gases pose on tornado intensity to increase the accuracy of prediction models. Additionally, we will further support missions relating to tornadoes or greenhouse gases. Next slide, please. Here is the Airborne Science team. Our team is composed of eight people, myself, Haley, Adriana, Tristan, Jackson, Vincent, Arjun, and Reed. Our intern is Danielle, and our master teacher is Mrs. Huber. Next slide, please. Our science goal is to determine if there's an evident correlation between the presence of greenhouse gases and the environmental conditions that tend to cause tornadoes, as well as the intensity level of tornadoes. We plan to investigate these by three objectives. The first objective is to collect data on different environmental conditions associated with the tornado. The second objective is to quantify four greenhouse gas concentrations. Lastly, the last ob objective is to compare and contrast between tornado intensity and greenhouse gas concentrations. Next slide, please. We plan to use two aircraft for this mission, the Elizabeth Regina 2 or the ER-2 and the McDonnell Douglas DC-8. The ER-2 is reserved for thunderstorms and tornado watches along with emergencies. It flies above storms and focuses on collecting data on the tornado conditions mentioned previously. Our second aircraft, the DC-8, is deployed more frequently and will collect data during static weather periods, specifically on greenhouse gases. While the two planes have nearly identical instruments and collect the same measurements, the particular characteristics of each plane, such as useful payload, endurance, and altitude range, allow it to conduct different parts of the mission. Our entire mission duration is nine years, with five years being dedicated to data collection. Various instruments will be a part of our mission as well. Furthermore, this mission will spread knowledge about tornado formation, conditions, and tornadoes in general. Next slide, please. Thank you so much to the entire Airborne Science team for working hard towards our mission. You guys were a great group to work with. Furthermore, thank you to all of the staff for giving us a wonderful opportunity and continue to support us throughout our mission. Lastly, thank you all for listening, and I hope you guys have a re great rest of your day. Thank you for that presentation, Airborne Science. Um, let's move on now to our UAS group. Hi, my name is Shreya Spinaji. 
I'm Fernando Gina, and I'm a project manager for kernel reduction and depth analysis, also known as Prada. Our mission platform is unmanned aerial systems. On the team, we have Kenzie Stinson, our research scientist, Kapil Kolkarni, our applied scientist, Rizvit Redigari, our industry specialist, Raleigh O'Brien, our environmental scientist, and Dima Hamza, our public relations specialist. Next slide, please. Prada is designed to study permafrost depletion and greenhouse gas emissions in Alaska. We will, we will measure greenhouse gas emissions due to permafrost melt and track the rate of thaw of permafrost. Our mission stakeholders are Wallace Flight Facility, Electro Solar, DJI, FreeFly, ICI infrared cameras, the National Park Service, and the FAA. Our platforms are Electro 2 Solar, the FreeFly Ulta 8, and the DJI Matrix 3 RTK. Our survey site is Anaktubic Pass, Alaska, and our mission time frame is from January 2022 to December 2028. Next slide, please. On this, on this mission, we'll have four instruments. The Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar, also known as the INSAR, the H20T Quad Center Solution, and the Mirage HC Optical Gas Engine Camera, and the Scanning Mode channel Microwave Radiometer, also known as the SIMR. Our mission will inform people about permafrost emissions as well as prevent potential infrastructure damage, will also protect local communities, and will prevent unnecessary expenditure on reconstruction. Next slide, please. We will fly three drones in a lawnmower pattern every single week of July for five years. Our research is connected in a 25 square mile area, which you can see on the right. We have press, press release, a website, a fact sheet, workshops, conferences, and social media. For education, we have primary, middle, secondary, and college resources available. Next slide, please. I'd like to thank all the people involved, including Ms. Kubrick, Matt Coldsnow, Shari Davies, Brian Young, Wall Street Facility, and Virginia Space Coast Scholars. Thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. To say that every week we've done this the past three weeks, I always enjoy seeing the students' presentations. And this week was no exception. Every week I say, these are the best presentations I've seen. I'm just overwhelmed by their research and presentations on such complex subjects. Ryan Carter, our Virginia Space Grant Consortium's media specialist, has put together an excellent video that highlights the week. Oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself. I forgot. Um, I just want to uh, say that I would love for to hear from all of the students, and I'm sure you would too, about their fantastic week that they've had. But we can't hear from them all because we don't have enough time. So I've selected a couple of students to say a few words um, about their experience this week. Our first student that we're going to hear from is Riley O'Brien. So Riley, if you could come on and just tell us about your week. Hi, my name is Riley O'Brien. I'm from Fredericksburg, Virginia, and I was the environmental scientist for the Unmanned Aerial Systems Group this week. There are so many things that I enjoyed about this academy, from the, scroll, from the small group work to the guest speakers and even the final presentation. One of my favorite aspects of this academy was the work we did with our teams. I was really able to dig deep and gain a good understanding of the area we chose to study thanks to my teammates. The small group work really helped me to do my best work while also making amazing friendships. I was able to work with some really wonderful people throughout the course of the week, and I'm so thankful that I was given this opportunity. Another thing that I really enjoyed about this academy was the actual work that we were doing. We got to learn about how we got to learn about how to design a NASA mission. Not only was this enjoyable, but it also gave me great experience as I go into college and my future career. Knowing how real scientists design and craft NASA missions has been so inspiring to me, and it has reinforced my desire to pursue a STEM related career. Our mission was really fun to work on and gave me a lot of knowledge that I can take with me to use in my future. The guest speakers we had were also all incredible. It was fascinating to see what some real NASA scientists work on and to see the layout of Wallops Flight Facility. I also loved all of the presentations on other opportunities that we can pursue in the future. It was really exciting to see some of the programs that I can be a part of next. The presentation given last night by Dr. Ed Murphy from the University of Virginia was also incredible. I had the opportunity to see and hear some really amazing people talk about some really interesting subjects throughout the course of the week, and that alone could have made this one of the best experiences of my life. The final mission presentations were also a surreal experience. My team and I got to present the work that we had been doing 
all week to other scholars, parents, teachers, and interns, and NASA staff. I never thought that I'd have the opportunity. I also got to see all of the other presentations the other groups were working on throughout the week. All of the presentations were incredible and very enjoyable to watch. It was probably one of the most amazing things that I have ever been able to do. Throughout the course of presenting and practicing, we were also able to gain many soft skills. I think that my presentation skills have increased significantly since I started this academy. We were taught how to present well in a professional setting, which is a skill that we can take with us and use in almost any career path we choose to go into. My research skills and general knowledge about our platform have also improved throughout the course of this week. Creating a NASA mission has really challenged me to think about different aspects of a mission that I had never considered before. I believe that my critical thinking skills have also improved thanks to the Q&A sessions after presentations. We need to be ready for whatever questions may be asked about our project, which helped me to fully prepare myself and try to understand all aspects of my part of the mission. Finally, all of the program directors, teachers, interns, and staff were amazing. They helped us create something that I never thought I'd be able to do in high school. They guided us in the right direction and gave us clues whenever we felt stuck. Throughout the practice sessions for the final presentation, interns, teachers, and staff all asked us very thought-provoking questions. They helped us to really round out our plan and make sure that we knew as much as possible before going to present to the Wallops community. I'd like to thank all of the staff, master teachers, and interns that made this week possible. I'd also like to thank my teammates for making this week so enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Riley. That was fantastic. I'm glad you had a great week. Our next speaker will be Aiden Levy. Hello, my name is Aiden Levy, and I'm from Fairfax, Virginia. This week, I had the opportunity to work with the Expendable Launch Vehicle team as an instrument specialist in the engineering office. Beside me, you can see a Lego model of the space shuttle preparing to land and end its mission. Before we end our mission this week, I'd like to share about the tremendous growth that I've not only seen in myself throughout this program, but also in my peers and team members. To preface, I've had the privilege of engaging in several uh, various STEM experiences. As mechanical captain of FIRST Robotics Competition Team 612, and the vice president of the Technology Student Association at my school. I've fortunately had some practice applying technical skills to problems to find creative and innovative solutions. But I didn't know where to apply these skills or how to create a long-term career out of them. And the significant gap is why this program was so personally impactful. Before the Summer Academy, all scholars participated in a vigorous online course. In the online course, I was introduced to the goals, objectives, visions, and projects of NASA, and my passion for aerospace skyrocketed. I remember sitting back in my chair, looking up at the ceiling after I completed a module of the online course and realizing that this is what I wanna do for the rest of my life. And not only that, but I've noticed that so much of this program's content is applicable to our everyday lives. I remember creating a LinkedIn profile after a LinkedIn project assignment. I remember being ready for an entire unit of chemistry this year because I'd already learned the concept in one of our online assignments. And I remember crafting an essay in English um, after astronaut Ricky Arnold spoke to some of us. I remember working with my English teacher to receive feedback on some of my technical papers to expand my skills. And I remember presenting a project in history about my space shuttle, the space shuttle program. None of this passion or excitement about aerospace or NASA existed before this transformative program. So when we entered our team meeting room on Saturday, the first day of this um, summer academy, I think that from the online course, we were all prepared, but were unexpected of what was to come. We began developing two mission concepts, which we sculpted and presented. On Sunday night, while my team was continuing mission development, our, ma our master teacher and intern stepped into a breakout room to gradually interview individually per four positions. Something magical happened during this time. Our team began unstructured conversation about our everyday lives, our passions, and our stories. This is the time when I realized that our team was not only going to succeed, but we were going to excel extraordinarily. We all shared the same passion and drive, and everyone was excited about something and ready to contribute. As the week progressed, we had the privilege to hear from NASA professionals, subject matter experts, and many other incredible people. Not only were these people inspirational, but they gave us a glimpse into what they did and what our futures could be. The biggest takeaway this week for me, which these speakers greatly emphasized, 
is that every team requires a diverse set of team members to provide unique perspectives that accelerate and better every discussion, every brainstorming session, and every presentation. Throughout the week, we also had to prepare deliverables. These came in many forms, including quad charts, a traceability matrix, and mission strategies. When we started working on our deliverables, I think we completed them at first without questioning why. And when we talked to our subject matter expert, Mr. Forden, he emphasized that these quad charts, these traceability matrices, these presentations are all deliverables that the professionals at NASA complete on a daily basis. It was fascinating. Just yesterday, every scholar across every team helped present their team's mission. This great accomplishment is tremendously commendable and you all should be extremely proud of your work. I know I am. Thank you to everyone who made this program possible and a special thanks to my fellow Virginia Space Coast scholars. You all are the future and I, got, I cannot wait to see how you apply the experiences earned in this program. I am incredibly grateful for the honor and privilege of participating in this Virginia Space Coast Scholars Summer Academy. Thank you. Thank you for those kind and nice words. I hope all of the students had such a successful week. Thank you. Okay, so Ryan Carter, our media specialist, has gone through hours of recordings and has attended several sessions um, throughout the week to put together a really nice video that's gonna highlight everything from the week that the students participated in. The video will be available in about a week and I will send that link out to everyone as well as the panel presentation. Um, also, the students will also receive a certificate in about a week so be on the lookout for that. So let's go ahead and see what Ryan has made for us. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this year's Virginia Space Coast Scholars Forum. So let's get on with it. Let's get to work. Welcome to Wallace. Starting the program, it was really hard for everyone to start talking to each other because no one knew who each other was. But by the end of the week, it was a lot easier. I felt like we really made a connection because we all were talking about things we loved. And also public speaking was very difficult for me, especially. I'm not a good public speaker, but I felt like this program really forced you to try and you know get over your fears. I would say the Bollocks tour was my favorite um, because I have been to Wallops before, but I have not explored it as in depth as they did. And the presentation was very well done. I learned a ton about NASA and how they shoot off rockets that I did not know before. And I just learned overall a lot that I never knew. I probably have to say the Mars presentation from today because I personally am really interested in deep space. Um, I have been for a while, so it was really cool to kind of see visually because I hadn't seen any of this before. Um, I had seen it from other facilities, but not from um, this one. So it was really cool to kind of see how it all comes together. Um, and it kind of seems like a small thing, but I really liked watching the rocket kind of move up vertically um, because it's really cool how machines can um, carry that much weight as well. I 
the Sounding Rockets one. I really liked their mission and their goals. I kind of liked the idea of the Sounding Rocket, like, going up and kind of just seeing what's, what's up there. I really enjoyed the environmental and engineers uh, presentation. It was a great insight into how such a small team can make such a large impact. And I think that's something that all of the people in our group took away. And we each made sure that even if we had small ideas, we made sure to communicate them because they could have a huge impact and they could play a huge part in what we were doing in Orange. Students across Virginia should take part in programs like these because it expands their knowledge and understanding, and it also opens up their doors to things they would have never seen if they didn't take part in, in programs like this. You get to meet new people, you get to learn more about NASA than you ever knew, and it also um, opens up job opportunities. After this week, I better understand what Wallops offers career-wise and how I can see myself in the future at Wallops, whether it be on the environmental side or as a technician or a scientist there. start thinking about what are the careers at Wallops and NASA that might be in your future. Okay, that was a great job. I really enjoyed watching that video. I just want to thank everyone again for um, your participation. All you scholars, you did such a good job this week. Um, and just have a great summer. Enjoy the rest of it. I know there's not much of it left. And don't forget to sign up for our other programs for VAST and VES um, for next school year. The applications open August 15th. So make sure and sign up for another great opportunity. And be on the lookout for, the, for your certificate and the email that I'm going to send out with the panel presentation link and the closing ceremony link. Okay. Have a great summer.